I'm making insta coffee right now. Because we ran out of coffee grinds. And that's okay. the stream guys anybody who has come to check me out again thank you I appreciate it and anybody who's new thank you for stopping by unfarmables we'll check that out first thanks to brilliant for supporting this episode of scishow go to brilliant.org slash scishow to learn more hey how's it going Maximus food, welcome back to the stream food we need it to live in stuff, I'm but just for many people, right it's now. more it's than that. Tired. It's a hobby, a pastime, That's a boiling. passion. Farms and businesses work hard it's to satisfy boiling. the commercial and cultural needs of foodies. Gotta make the that world insta coffee. Over, but not everything can be plunked down in the ground and picked up a few months later, or grown happily in a tank. Some foodstuffs just aren't that cooperative. No matter how much we want them, the science of these plants, animals, and fungi is at odds with the demand. Take. Huckleberries, for example, kind of a big deal in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. As flocks of people head out into the woods every summer looking to yeah. fill their baskets with the sweet and juicy berries. I, I such demand gotta have coffee now. I, season is now a regulated event in, in some areas to help make sure there's enough fruit to go around. You see, these berries have a reputation of being difficult <laughs> nice. to grow in a farm setting. The soil conditions need to be just wow for right. If you're trying to grow them, researchers recommend a pH between 4.0 uh, and 5.3. Uh, with a mixture of sand, I silk, miss a and clay to last, give proper last drainage. Time I played, Traditionally in the wild, Huckleberry grows at high elevation. Like casually, this like environment played, provides an insulating you know, cover of snow to help protect the plant hardcore. during the sub-zero temperatures of winter. Without this insulation phenomenon at lower elevations, the plants simply freeze, and it's hard to replicate these conditions in other climates. Like imagine like carting a bunch of fake snow and then keeping it frozen. Not to mention they just grow painfully slow. It can take up to 15 years after planting seeds or cuttings to yield harvestable fruit. But maybe we're approaching them all wrong. After all, indigenous peoples have been cultivating huckleberry crops for centuries by managing the wild plants. They were the ones who taught early European arrivals to North America how to forage for the right berries. And over yeah, time, yo. this practice of foraging, cooking, and preserving evolved into the high demand craze that we see every year, at least here in Montana. Researchers have been working on creating a domestic variant of the huckleberry by crossbreeding it with certain strains of blueberries, which are closely related to huckleberries. These cultivars will be able to thrive in a variety of ecological settings, making it more likely that the number of okay. Crops could rise to meet the demand. I shall bear but back. I'm gonna go make my coffee.
And remember, folks, use a coaster to protect your goods. Wow, this coaster is not big enough for this cup. Um, I'm going to flip it upside down. Play a video, but I got to move some stuff on my desk Until here. that happens, the huckleberry will remain a treat for dedicated berry hunters, and only at certain times of the year. And that's not the only luxury food product in high demand. According to sushi lovers, nothing beats the flavor of bluefin tuna. Tuna in Japan sold for over $3 million. Since these fish are only found in the wild, high demand has led to high what prices the and overfishing, landing what the, the flavor on the endangered species list. We can't grow these fish in hatcheries yet because bluefin tuna have a complex life cycle making them very difficult to farm. They are a really big fish, like over three meters long and averaging 250 kilograms. They're fast swimming migratory fish, meaning that their natural habitat is much, much bigger than any tank, and they need to swim to develop properly. Plus, they are predators at the top yeah, they of gotta the food swim chain. To develop. So it takes a lot of energy to produce the animals they like to snack on. So mature adult bluefin tuna are difficult to care for, to say the least. But even as tiny free-floating larvae, they're oh, difficult to maintain. A study published in 1991, already. for example, showed that when larvae of one of the species of bluefin tuna are packed in tightly, they grow more slowly, and fewer of them survive. That study okay. actually looked at conditions in the wild, but with an eye toward what would happen in a tank. So measures could also be taken to avoid such issues. Also, larvae may be little, but their heads take up most of their size, so they're like a little top heavy. So tank conditions need to be just right to prevent them from literally sinking and actually getting hurt when they hit the bottom. Because of their size, it can take up to eight years for them to reach sexual maturity and spawn more fish. And fish in captivity often experience reproductive issues. Researchers in the EU and the US are trying to overcome these issues by Bees feeling the sick from the concert. To induce reproduction. If we can't establish captive populations, she party to too hard. Demand, overfishing is likely to continue. Party hard. Bad news for this fishy favorite. Other high demand foods are at risk of becoming okay. endangered too. The truffle is the poster child of expensive luxury foods. Some varieties of truffle can sell for hundreds of dollars per ounce. But this fungus could go the way of the dodo unless we figure out how to when grow it. When you feel a little steps. better, start so making truffles some Truffles aren't like the mushrooms you're probably familiar oh. with. They grow underground in close proximity to the root systems of trees, usually hardwoods. They're a mycorrhizal species, which means they have a symbiotic relationship with the trees in which they exchange nutrients and aid each other's growth. But humans haven't been doing a good job of caring for this fungus because deforestation and climate change are major threats to the forests across southern Europe that truffles call home in the wild. And they're costly and difficult to grow in a farm setting, mostly because it takes time to grow a fungus with such a complex life history. One researcher in the UK harvested his first truffle almost 10 years after planting the holly oak tree that would develop a relationship with the fungi. However, there might be a small silver lining to the role that climate change has taken. Even though the native habitats of truffle fungi are being destroyed, areas in more northerly forests in Europe may be growing more amenable to the yeah oh yeah I went to open up the oat milk because I have oat milk that I use when I run a regular milk for my coffee but I went to go open up the oat milk and the oat milk inside was fine but the cap I could see that there was mold growing around the cap and the area where you put the cap on you screw it back on there, there was just mold growing around that, but I poured it out because obviously I'm not going to drink that, and the milk was fine, you know, it was still good. It looked fine, no spots or anything, but there was just mold around the rim of the, the, the cap, and I was like, yeah, I ain't drinking that. I, ain't, I can't even pour that out without touching the mold, so I just threw it all out and opened up an entirely new um, oat milk. <laughs> I think it was because we got a new fridge, and when we put things from the new fridge, or from the old fridge into the new fridge, the new fridge wasn't all the way up and running yet, so there was that small little period where things were, like, in the zone where things could grow instead of it being refrigerated, and that's just...
these species. Given time, the ecosystem changes from climate change might just provide the opportunity for truffles to move to brand new habitats. Our demand for these foodstuffs outstrips the supply, and it seems unlikely that sushi fans or huckleberry lovers will let them go anytime soon, so we may need to apply some clever science in order to cultivate them. In addition to farming, though, this may be the incentive we need to preserve native habitats for the survival of all species, including the delicious ones. Because after all, isn't biodiversity the spice of life? We also think curiosity is an important part of life, which is why today's episode is brought to you by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app with a hands-on approach to science, engineering, computer science, and math. For example, you might enjoy their course on the joy of problem solving, which teaches you to see math not as a rote series of problems, but as a creative like exercise. Yes, math and creativity do go together, and this course will use hands-on exercises to show you how. Brilliant has over 50 courses that have storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, Damn, and problems chip to dip. solve. This course, as well as all the others, not are the chip dip. Apple no. platforms like iOS and Android, even offline, so you don't have to worry about a spotty connection in order to keep learning. The first 200 SciShow viewers to sign up at brilliant.org slash SciShow will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription, so check it out and see if it's right for you. I Thank just gotta you throw that whole sports. tub of protein yogurt right into the fridge because I forgot to eat it, and it's been in there for a while. Kind of an L, to be honest, but it is what it is. Wasting protein. How dare I? How dare I? All right, let's just get this out of the way. Rip the band-aid off so you can all point and laugh at me, spit at me, call me names, and give me wedgies. I'm not Percy Jackson. I didn't get. Oh no. Disney Plus finally released their trailer for the upcoming Percy Jackson series, and just like Batman's nice. parents, I'm not subscribe to the VOD uh, channel. They made the inexplicably disgusting decision to not cast me as the lead role, even though I put forth. Probably one of the best auditions Hollywood had ever been graced with. I'm not Mole would really be rooting foos out here, why though. They chose to cast an actual child to play Percy Jackson. I understand that Percy Jackson in the books is like 12 years old, but it's called acting. Yes, I may be a 28 year old man, but thanks to the miracle of technology, we can de age me a bit. I can shave, trim up my hair. I already have the height of a child. I should have been able to fit the bill. And I, you know, no disrespect to the actor playing Percy Jackson, all power to them. I think they've done a, a fantastic job, and I have no, no doubt the show is going to be a Yeah, weak success. ass stomach but you can't girl. Help wonder, what if they did cast me? We could have been looking at the next Citizens Kane, and and that's all I'm saying. It's just a, a bit of missed potential. And here. the Discord, and yes, I'm look at that. A bit disappointed yeah, yeah. The second time I've been snubbed, the first time Go being night, with my performance in the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part One didn't net me an Oscar nomination. I'm just really getting the sneaking suspicion Hollywood's not ready for my level of talent, and that's okay. They'll catch up at some point as our species continues to evolve. But the th the thing that I want to talk about here isn't the fact that I didn't get the role. I actually knew about I going hard as early as last year. I made a follow up video. To fishy going hard. What are you doing, doing Fishy? The role, but what did surprise you me got the zoomies or something? What I feel is outright wrong and borderline illegal is the fact that Disney used my public audition tape, which I proudly posted for the world to see what true acting looks like, and I thought it'd be kind of like a victory lap and a teachable moment for all up-and-coming aspiring actors to, you know... He seems to be okay. He was just zooming there for a second. It spooked me. I thought he was... I submitted it to Disney. He was flailing. ...through the official channels as well, so they clearly got it, and they clearly watched it, because they used my exact lines in my audition for their official trailer. And, you know... That, that's a load of dirty barnacles, I'll tell you what. I spent a long time choosing my monologue for that audition tape, and Disney just takes it and, and, and you know, wipes their ass with it. I, 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 I've had about enough. I've had enough to hear, honestly, with all this tomfoolery in Hollywood, especially with Disney. Not only did they refuse me the role that I was meant to play, they also turned around and released cum hats. Actual Disney, Disney no. Disney helmet merch. You know, where does the magic Oh my stop? god, Disney. Disney. Have you no shame? Cocky helmet. Disney, no. Helmet merch. No. The Quicksilver Terminator fucking nutted all over that, dude. You know, where does the madness stop, Disney? Have you no shame at all? And really, I, it's not just Disney. I'm tired of, you know, the, the Hollywood elite not taking me seriously. They're just like, oh, 
let's fuck Charlie in the ass again. You know, his butthole's loose enough to take it. Ha, hardy, har, har. You know, and I'm out here giving my all in these roles for these for these auditions, and I'm not getting any callbacks. But anyway, let me let me show you my audition compared to the official trailer because it's jarring. The Percy Jackson trailer came out. Oh man, that's so painful. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm not in it. Oh jeez. It's so painful. It should have been me. Fuck. I didn't want to be a half blood. He didn't want to oh, be a half blood. I even read this line. It's dangerous. No fucking way. It's scary. Most of the time, it gets you killed. I read the. They stole this from my audition tapes. What? I did that line so much better. Bro, I no fucking way. <laughs> no. You ever did? Where do I start? Oh, oh, yeah. right here. I didn't want to be a half blood. If you suspect you might be a half blood, then just close Okay, they cut this part. Just go ahead and close in, delete whatever line you were on the wall telling me about your date. You do that. Where does it pick up? Being a half blood. There it is. Wait. Sometimes it gets you killed. That is so much better than that kid. Why didn't I get the roll? Literal chills. No, you're doing it too quickly, Charlie. You gotta, you gotta drag it out for five minutes so that it's half the episode and takes up view time. They stole this from my audition. They plagiarized my audition and didn't even cast me. Yes, I understand it's supposed to be played by a 12-year-old. That's the beauty of acting. I shave, I trim my hair a bit, perhaps, and bang, I'm 12 years old. M and maybe a little de-aging AI tech. Damn. That was, I, that was my line. If you suspect you might be a half-blood, then just close it in for you. Just go ahead and close in, delete whatever- Listen to that emotion. Listen to this range. Being a half blood is dangerous. Yeah, I got it for Christmas. The PlayStation. Oh my god, the emphasis there is nuts. Oh, unlucky. Disney just wasn't ready. Okay. Uh, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. They stole my it is comfy. from my audition tape. It's a very calm feature. And I guarantee this kid's not going to be as good as action. Walk up into any Sony store and they'll think I'm the employee. They'll think I'm like the manager there. Like, oh yeah, this guy got a different uniform. I do my own stunts. He got a secret Sony sweater. See, like, this is outrageous. This kid's not going to be able to do that. That was my role. I was born to play that role. Now that I've presented the irrefutable evidence, I believe we can all come to the conclusion that Disney owes me an apology. And I'll settle for nothing less than a minor role in a major blockbuster production. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's a little fucked up they do this. I chose that line from a list of Percy Jackson's most famous quotes, and I called dibs. And you can't, hmm. you can't break the bro code like that. I've never read Percy Jackson. I never even watched the Percy Jackson movies. I actually don't know shit about the character at all. It just happened to be an open casting call that sounded like fun. And I killed it. I crushed that audition. I don't care what anyone for real. says. I, I became Percy Jackson for a brief moment during that audition. Charlie left this realm. And the spirit of Percy Jackson came But you gotta think about it though This is like delivered some of the most powerful This is like He put all that stuff in the background Specifically so the stream could see it Right So Basically The only time he's ever in this room Is when he's streaming Or using his computer And all that's there Is just for decoration As like it's As if it's like a set <laughs> hard-hitting line in sword fighting choreography video cameras have ever captured and it's it's shocking they didn't shoot don't want to be the next so, yeah. also also he was roasting people with the dirtiest setups on twitch so i mean like dirtiest room i have a couple of these i watched uh there's a few other ones They're a little bit more spread out than I thought they were, but there's a there's a couple. 
dirtiest rooms on Twitch. And you can't you can't you can't be uh, roasting those guys and then have a dirty room in the next couple in the next couple videos. That's that's just uh that's just waiting to get roasted yourself. I got some videos here on a playlist that we can check out. About 70,000 liters. And yes, those are real people flying under real helium balloons. But if you just want to know the answer to how much Damn. helium you need to lift a person, while an average adult weighs about 70 kilos, in normal conditions, one liter of helium will provide enough lift for about one gram. So you need about 70,000 liters. Proving that and finding out how this is done safely and how you can also have a go that's the rest of this video. I've wanted to do something like this for years. Of course I have. I think lots of people have dreamt of flying away on balloons, but as far as I knew, balloons. the logistics and safety required made it impossible unless you had a ridiculous budget. And then someone told me about Aeroplume in France and the budget dropped to 60 euro for a ticket. So the rest of this video isn't going to be scripted. It's just me, one of the team here holding my camera and about 70,000 liters of helium that's going to lift me up. This hangar was built in 1919. It was used first for the blimp here to surveil and fly over the coast to detect the enemy submarines. And in 2000, it goes out of the military domain. Be careful to your head. Oh, yeah, that is, yeah. That's, that's, that's solid. Okay. Yeah. The history of the aeroplane starts maybe more than 20 years ago. Oh, you trying to get me to do the push-ups though? All right. All right, let me do a little stretch. <sighs> Drink some of my coffee here. Oh, fuck. I said drink, not spill. <sighs> Tastes like fucking dirt. Extra five. I can switch back. That's a blimp who was created by a, na a man who is called Jean Pierre David, a French artist. Two that for was one, that's much right. Than I thought it would be. <laughs> he discovered the world of the blimp and felt in love, and so because he's an inventor, it's a win win. A you get he decided to create two redemptions for one, blimp, and I get. Uh, more games <laughs> to allow him to fly by beating the wings since 2009 we propose all people to fly here the other location is a cave 50 meters under the ground we propose the flight here during uh, all the french school holidays so if we just let you go now so are they saying there are two there are two options to get this done was either yeah we get this <laughs> this warehouse that was made for blimps or uh, some cave 50 meters underground <laughs> i don't know man that's kind of sketchy don't you think on the top <laughs> and you won't be able to go down ever say right so if i want you to be free and autonomous i have to make you reach the static balance okay that's why depending on your weight yeah i can add some little weight like this got it to your blimp in order to make you float if you just take off this, this oh one. What, what is happening? You're just floating, yeah? Just floating. We have three aeroplanes here, and they are different by their volumes. We have a bigger one that can carry up to 90 kilograms, 
we have one that can carry up to 70 kilograms and one that can carry up to 45. Now you can take the wings by the black. Everything you will do, you will do it really slowly. Yeah. That's the same as if you were swimming. Okay. So first I will show you how to move forward. Okay. You want the wings to be flat like this. Yeah. In order to go, take some air and push behind. Like same. paddling a kayak. Yeah, exactly the same as in a kayak. And if I want to turn with one? Exactly. So you know how to turn. If you are doing only one wing, you will turn. Doesn't react so quickly. Yeah. But when it's turning, now you can take a break. It will continue during a very long time. There is a lot of inertia here. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was turning at all, and then suddenly I was. Yes. And we can <laughs> also go back. If you then suddenly it was turned. By pushing the air on the front and go flat again <laughs> to go up the same as if you were swimming again yeah. when you go forward the air is going under the wing and that provides and lift you have to switch yeah to make the same angle when oh. you go back and this is every time like this <laughs> from the front to the back you can feel it the air is going <laughs> under the wing <laughs> if you want to go down it will be the opposite movement that, that actually is so really natural. cool. That won't lie. That's fucking awesome. At the beginning of the season, we just choose to fill the blimp with 100% helium. Okay? And with the time, the helium is going out. There is some leaks. So we can just add some more helium to compensate. And the really one problem here is the osmosis. So there is the air present outside that wants to go in the IO plume. And once it's in, we can't extract him, so the more we spend the time here, the more air is inside, so the less he can carry. Once a year, we have the obligation to just empty everything and refill it again. Of course, we are uh, uh, conscious of the helium because it's very expensive and we don't want to waste helium. Yeah, okay, don't do nothing. Once you, you get high, yeah, the I start to descend again. Once you get high, mm, yeah. high, actually high. And maybe we will repeat that after, but we I d that is cool that it goes up and down. Yeah, and it depends on the temperature. Like oh, he, he will just float at at bo at a certain I'm level I'm and never go down, huh? Definitely going up quite quickly now. That's why I just take off one kilogram. The higher you are, the authority. Now you reach a new situation of static balance with the new condition of temperature. Because of the slow speed of the balloon and the inertia, you have hmm. to pilot really slowly and that's why we are indoor to be protected against the wind and all the variation of the weather. So yeah, certain weights, I you you'll have a certain the door saying a different static balance because the, the air pressure will be different. So the lower you are, the closer you are, the, the heavier you have to be to, to float closer to the earth and the lighter you are, the higher you are to float. And but. But taking off just one, two pounds won't make you float all the way out of the earth. It'll just make you float to a certain level. Yeah. That, 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 that's my understanding of it, at least. I don't fully understand. I was just... Make sure that the door is closed. Trying to wrap my head around it. Because the breeze would blow me completely off course. There is no problem of safety because we're following you on the ground, always linked by a little tether. But the tether is slack. You're not holding me down here, I'm just floating. No, you are totally free. If you're slow and quiet enough, you will realize how to pilot and have the time to anticipate so the tether is not you. Huh? Take some break and observe that it's still turning left. You're right. Yeah, you can rest also. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> if it's too late to avoid the wall or the roof, it will pull, not for your safety, but for the safety of the blimp. Otherwise, if we just touch so many times, it, it will break. That's not a pressurized balloon. That's just an envelope filled with helium. So the helium will just go out slowly. It will lose its capacity to carry, so the pilot will land slowly. I'm amazed how oh, yeah. calm um, and safe I feel right now. It's happened one time here. So I downloaded Valhazia. Some elements from the roof just go and through I can the envelope, and it. the pilot didn't notice that. And so we'll I found a server. Oh, it's difficult because the helium was going out. I found a server that we can use right. to play to on. Yeah. More if than anybody wanted to join as well. Here in the aeroplane and zero accident. Oh, you know what? I mean, it's not a spot on landing, but I'll take it. If you can catch the cable. I'm going to try. 
There we go. That sheet. Got it. Perfect. So I will just take the time to lean to the balloon, and yep. I will help people go out. That's a really good <laughs> I'm half expecting you to take the table up with me here. No, it is attached to the ground. <laughs> you All can. right. Yeah, you can. If you want to. <laughs> Antoine, thank you so, so much. <laughs> that was incredible. Thank you. <laughs> Damn. That's pretty wild. I, I would love to do that. That's pretty cool. Okay, we'll watch this one and then we'll play some Minecraft. Making games is a real challenge. Especially if you're a solo dev, the whole thing can turn into rocket science in the blink of an huh? eye and eventually you fail. Today we will talk about how we can survive among these challenges and how we can finish our project. Wim management. Even if you're yeah. an experienced game dev, a brilliant idea that you have may cause a whim. It's dangerous if you cannot manage it. When you decide to go solo on your game development journey, you also accept to wear too many caps like game designer, level designer, character... Yes, I know how to code, but not like a lot, you know. I spent time in high school taking computer sciences, so I learned a lot of HTML, Java, and CSS. And then when I left, I started to do a little bit of Python stuff, but I don't really know that much Python. And now I'm just slowly learning more Python as time goes on because I want really like using that. Artist, game developer, blah blah blah, and each cap you wear contains unique challenges in itself. And eventually, those challenges will kill your whim, and you will end up with an unfinished game. Whether you like or not, a whim is temporary. It cannot get measured, and also leads you to wrong decisions. Instead of whim. Planning is the truth itself. A plan can get measured and will lead you to the right decisions. What we need to do is turn our whim into a long-term plan. Maybe it won't be as easy as dreaming about your brilliant game idea, but otherwise you don't have any chance to finish your game. Making a plan. Making a game development plan is a topic that I should make thousands of videos about, but today I'll give you the core of yeah. making plan. Actually, we are trying to design the process. The games poorly Oops, trying the sorry. process dreaming. Yeah, it's there's so many use cases for so many different types of um, languages, like like obviously creating a website, HTML, Java, and CSS, PHP. All that's going to be very great to to learn how to use. Um, and they can all be used together to make something as well. Just like you can use Java with Python, stuff like that. Um, but I think Python, so far from what I've seen and all, all the coding I've done, has has had the most versatility for for just getting stuff done. Especially when you when you want to make something that's like bot related. Like oh my god, there's so so much capabilities for for bots with Python and I just love it so much about your brilliant game idea but otherwise you don't have any chance to I eventually I have an idea to make uh, my own kind of like stock bot that I want to throw some money at one day and just kind of let and see what it does but is a topic not really have like high expectations for it just like throw some throwaway money at it you the core of making plan actually we are trying to design yeah. the process that we will go through while making our game since you are all alone in this process your plan must suit your abilities the first thing you should do is to be sure which cap you wear more confidently think about yourself like a football team if your team can run too fast then you should focus on counter-attacking so that you can benefit from this superior skill. For instance, like when that Reddit expect a bot came out, oh buddy, right? I was, I was, today, I was I was helping, I was helping make that thing so I'm telling beautiful. You that your game shouldn't rely on graphics if you are a skilled developer. Instead, you should focus on mechanics so that no one can write its code. It's your strongest skill. Your prior focus should be on mechanics. If you're a highly skilled artist, improve your game's visuals until your game's Here. poorly coded I make, mechanics um, become invisible. Visuals I do ask Reddit sometimes where I make, I make my own little posts. And I like to put them up. And this is just kind of the thing here. But these are some of the comments. We got, what phrase do you find yourself saying a little too often? Suck the back of my dick twice on a Tuesday. God gives nuts to the man who has no teeth. You know what I'm saying? 
Suck me sideways. Oh no! <laughs> Hassle and a half. I'm just starting my 20s. This came out of nowhere. Wait till it gets to three out of four. <laughs> Dilution is the solution to pollution. I heard an Indian man saying this when he was dismissing the pollution of one's Indian's rivers. The phrase is catchy and sometimes I find myself mumbling it while looking at my fish. <laughs> Intelligence is key to this. Proceeds to fuck up everything and that's why I don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, so of uh, what habit do you frequently fo uh, what habit do you frequently do you do or what habit you do frequently? Yeah, I fucked that up. I was tired as shit when I wrote that. Uh, you believe in noise others. Moving my legs and my hands, being annoying, eating cool whip. <sighs> whip. I tend to ignore or I tend to ignore or just straight up stupid questions, unnecessary stupid questions, being alpha male. Sigma male of the pride. Singing, I'm a terrible singer, but I like to belt out made up songs and commercial jingles. It annoys the fuck out of my husband. My dog seems to quite, or seems to like it quite well. However, they don't get out much to exist. I think speaking, uh, I think I'd be, oh, I think I'd be speaking to many men by saying this, doing absolutely nothing, just literally just having your mind go blank for several minutes. Whenever someone sees me in the that state, they always assume I'm deep in thought and something serious on my mind. And when they ask, and I reply, oh, I wasn't thinking about anything, really. They get mad because they believe I am trying to hide something from them. And that happens to me quite often. Stubbornly refusing to drop dead, that I speak my mind. And then we got, what is your go-to McDonald's order? Big Mac meal, an extra Big Mac sauce, quarter pounder, and some other burger. Nuggets with a Sprite. Yeah. And even you, while making the development plan, you should be aware of your core abilities. And you also have to be honest with yourself. And also, don't forget about your skills while designing the game. You should always focus on your strongest side. Otherwise, you will get overwhelmed by struggling with the stuff that you cannot handle. Time management is a subject that thousands of books have been written about. If you ask my opinion, none of these books are worth a dim. Time management is not a subject that can be learned by reading a book. You have to experience it through suffering. You are trying to squeeze game development between your personal pleasures and responsibilities. None of these books know the pleasures and responsibilities better than you. Just set a reachable goal for yourself and try to stick to the plan. If you cannot reach that goal, lower the goals next week and please don't blame yourself otherwise you will also hey, I'll just do things I'll, I'll just go to ask reddit and then let's go here I'll just be like yeah I'll be like um what it's a controversial if I can spell Opinion you have no, that's fair. That's fair. You can't. You can't do that. Okay. I'll have to think of a better question. Dang. And it will affect your mental health but I feel like things like that would lead to like a lot of comments, you know? The project that you think will get finished in three months is most likely to get finished in at least nine months. Be aware of this at the beginning of your journey. This extra time is not for sleeping. Do not forget that there are too many things that you did not take into the account while planning your journey. 
making a game excited you, but after a while you lost your motivation and you are about to throw the game into the trash bin. This could be the worst scenario. It's perfectly normal to lose interest in your project, but instead of killing your game depressingly... I have only ever coded two things. One of them is lost a time now and I can't find it anymore. And the other thing was fixing up a Reddit bot that generates reddit posts for you and makes it into a TikTok format and I edited some of that code so that I could make it work a little better and those are the only two projects that I've ever actually worked on outside of having to do it for school yeah now th those would be the only two projects for Python I have But the first project was just like a little auto game clicker thing that I was making. Because I did not, did not want to use paid programs. And I was like, I could just make a program myself. And then I did. And it wasn't very good. And I was annoyed with it for half fucking time. Because I didn't want to pay for things. You think about which small change can make the game more exciting. Maybe a very small feature can help you to gain motivation again. You can watch how I beat the lack of motivation in my own game called Bubble Whelm by clicking on the card. Working on a hard project may get you out of motivation. In this case, instead of beating yourself out, step aside and ask yourself, how can I make this easier? Maybe removing a few features can save your life. The most important rule is always playable at the end of the day. Every time you are done with your game, it should play without errors when For you real. press the play button. Imagine that you've coded if you have coded sketchy and programmed an auto clicker are you even you a developer for <laughs> next two weeks and you will forget about your code even worse it's very likely that you will not find the motivation to go back to a problematic and unfinished code tomorrow trust me guys tomorrow you will hate yourself for the buggy code you left if there is a game that you are currently developing and it is not playable, close this video immediately and oh. make it playable. I am sure it will be more useful than watching this video. Every feature you add to the game may not worth the effort. Sometimes a feature in which you, you spend only 15 minutes can double the fun, but sometimes the mechanic that you have written for weeks may not even take your game one step further. So first, collect low hanging fruits, maybe at the end of the day you won't need to collect high hanging fruits. At the end of the day, don't forget that you are making a game. Writing high quality code or making good visuals doesn't mean that you are making a perfect game. A game is a form of entertainment and its quality is only get measured by how much it entertains the people. Let's face the fact that no this one cares so about your though. perfect coding skills. All they want is fun. Let other people play your game and rate your game according to- If you code a game perfectly and there's no like bugs or glitches, it's just gonna die eventually because you're just there's gonna be nothing cool about it and then people there's, there's, there's gonna be so much less content about it <laughs> to how much you, you kind of gotta have people. bugs and Please glitches and shit now from here word by word like it works even if i write a spaghetti code <laughs> If you write a spaghetti code, you are going to freak out about the change you make in the future. What I'm saying is, just try not to over-engineer it, okay? And that's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next video. Right. Oh, wasn't trying to do that. I just want to switch to Minecraft now.
Oh, fantastic, because it also reset it to the beginning of the stream before I started it. So everything was muted. And the music super loud. But basically, anytime I open anything, like if I go to open the Spotify for the start song for the stream, it crashes. If I go to open Minecraft, it crashes. So anytime I open a new program while Spotify or while OBS is running, it just crashes. Oh, you you, you want to play a different game? Nah. <laughs> Ask Reddit. <laughs> Damn. They'll be like, have you have you tried turning it on and off again? Yes, every night. One. I left my house at 9 o'clock this morning and I'm looking for an extension cord. Oh wow. <laughs> so that, so that's what, what was it, fucking five? Four yeah. hours of fucking looking for fucking power? Damn. Bullshit. <laughs> you streaming? Yeah. Cool. And you watching? Yep. Oh, sweet. That guy. Lord Maximus. island I found. I have to grow my single tree. I didn't think about this. I came out here. I was like, this would be a great place to make a house and didn't have a tree. Or any wood on me whatsoever. A couple planks. right now. Oh. Right. 
Just gonna have to wait for the morning. <laughs> and then uh, halfway through a song, it turned the eyes turned red. So I was trying to film it. <laughs> Holy shit! It's fucking awesome. <laughs> and then yeah, right right on the last song, they fucking they shot the lasers and did the Pink Floyd triangle. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Sick. It's the one time they use the lasers to make the triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! They use lasers. Look over at Brianna, she'll just be like wiping a tear from her eye. She'll be like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Holy fuck. Yeah. You should have you should have faked the pregnancy, man. Come on, what are you rookies? You should have got the beer belly, right? And then you know David knocked you up and you headed to the fucking the concert. Fuck free free warm beer all night. Or with your purse? You put the wine in your purse, but they they started searching purses and stuff. Yeah. Back in the day, you couldn't search purses, right? So. No, she uh, Brianna brought her backpack, <laughs> and we were in the line there, and we got near the the uh, the, the gates, the fucking the thing. Prohibited items, first thing, backpack. <laughs> so we're walking up to her like, oh, we might just have to toss this bag. <laughs> <laughs> right, we get up to the thing and I'm like holding the bag, right? And the guy's like, I put my phone in the, the tray. Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, you can put your bag in there too? And I was like, oh, okay. So I put my, the bag in there. I just walked through the thing and grabbed it. The security guard grabbed the bag, patted it down, and I was like, cool. Shit, done. <laughs> right on. Guess backpack for prohibited. <laughs> Luckily, we only had like four things in there, so it didn't look like it was like filled to the rim or yeah, shit. Yeah, like fucking clearly you were bringing something in back back. But then there was fucking a guy in the other line I saw, and he had this see-through bag with like seven water bottles in it. And I was like, you think they're gonna let you through with seven water bottles in your bag and that's all you have in that bag? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, no, that's... It's like fucking third forty dollars that those guys ain't making because you brought yeah. your own water. They can just pour that shit out, buy some like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I, like I was walking up and I saw fucking like a, a coffee cup and like some like bottles and water and stuff like that sitting next to the thing. I was yeah. like, yeah, people had to put their shit down, huh? You can't bring stuff with you. Sir, <laughs> that's how they make the fucking money. Your ticket sales is what to get. That's admission to the building, so you can buy the stuff, right? That fucking that that ticket price, half of me, I don't know how much of it, but that's that's for the stadium. They pay the guys who fucking rented out the hall, right? Yeah. And then once you get in there, all that fucking t-shirts and fucking that's all them, right? That's all their merchandising, so that's what they want. So you fucking you already wearing a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Buy yeah. a new one. <laughs> and then um, what was the other thing? Oh, you got strawberry banana? I want one. Yeah. <laughs> I got chocolate, man. I can't oh, yeah. eat it. I yeah, can't eat fucking... it. I had one shake out of that whole <laughs> fucking thing. It's to the brim still. I haven't even touched it, bro. Damn. I can't eat it. I tried to fucking put chocolate peanut butter in there. I yeah. tried to put fucking different kinds of berries. I tried using milk. I tried to use just water. I tried every fucking combination of my guy. Chocolate is ass. Yeah, no. The, the other chocolate that I, I got one that's chocolate back there. I used it like four times, and the one t other time I used it was for pancakes. And I was like, these pancakes thing are like great. Yeah. It's just. And then I bought another 
is that that would be unforgivable for you too. And too. If either one of you fucking ordered something and it came back and I found it, it's because you clicked the wrong box. That is in fucking yeah. You guys grew up with computers. You read <coughs> computers. You should know how to operate computers. <coughs> my same attitude would say. You've grown up with these things. Like, you, do you know what I mean? Right? You don't yeah. remember times when there wasn't a computer. I can very vividly remember a time before computers, okay? <laughs> like, I had to learn these fucking things. So, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a kind of forgiveness for fucking old, but if you're a youngster and you literally clicked the wrong box, oh, boy. that's like signing your name wrong. How did you sign the wrong name? <laughs> So she wouldn't order me two of these. <laughs> she ordered yep. me two of these, and she got me some fucking creatine and a fucking a vegetable thing, a vegetable capsule, something like that, that I can put in my mix. So it could be a daily dose of vegetables. So, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> so funny, I fucking I, I saved all that creatine, uh, finished the bottle. I was like, fuck, I don't have any more. And I looked up my fucking my bank account. I was like, I don't have any money. So I was like, yeah, you just gotta wait two weeks, and then. Two weeks came by, phone broke. I was like, ah, I can't buy my creatine. Son of a bitch. So fucking for like an entire month, I just haven't taken creatine, and I'd be like, damn, I was on the ball with it every day. You probably noticed it right away too, didn't you? Yeah, and I was like, oh man, I notice the effects and stuff, and now you don't have as like strength, that. and you're not as big. <coughs> it just fucking just helps you retain so much water, man. <coughs> yeah. And then yeah, that that just helps when you're fucking actually doing stuff. Yeah, like, oh know. yeah, now you're not fucking getting burnt out yeah, after and that and you're not getting that lactic acid burn so much because your body's literally holding water. Yeah. Like it's not waiting for the next bulk to flush your system. It's like, fuck, I got water right here, man. Yeah, and this is when you start looking all... You see those guys when they're all big, but they look really round? Yeah. Like, everything muscle looks, like, almost cartoonishly round? That's because of the cream team. Cream team fucking rounds them out like that. So once you get fucking where you want to be, then... <laughs> then the real work comes in of like okay like just just your daily supplement and then a whole fucking truckload of work yeah. right so it's, you don't want to be one of those guys that's just like oh, I'm not as big as I used to be oh, just a little bit of help just a little bit of help yeah. and then next thing you know you're 60 fucking poor with a fucking kidney failure was it worth it? I can tell you right now I'm fucking I will promise you right now it's never worth it not a single one of those guys that fucking decided to do steroids or abuse their bodies to look good young then got all the food food with it that's a lie <laughs> getting old is the worst thing known to mankind and you know if I was young again I would spend all of my youth getting ready to get old that's all I would have done I don't know what you guys but I kind of like that yeah <laughs> I kind of like Hank come hanging out with my brother and I guess my fucking fucked up here and my sister and I guess I ain't fucked up <laughs> my dog and my fucking my other sister over there and my brother downstairs and yeah I kind of like coming I still want to do these things when I'm fucking 80. <laughs> See, I feel like I'm really proud of you, man. You're not like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get huge. But you're like, no, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to be where I want to be and live forever. <laughs> not fucking taking stupid fucking pills and fucking goddamn. Like, oh, I'll order some shit from Russia. Yeah, it should work. <laughs> like, no, I did my research. For years, I've watched your research. I did my research. I did all my motivation. I did my planning. And now I'm here to kill it. What the fuck is this? One man army? Huh. Mm. You can speed heat. That's a fun game. Yeah. Ooh, it's fast. Like, I'm at the point now where I'm just. I, I use a glitch to get the money. I was like, fuck, I don't want to mine. I want fast cards now. So I get enough money to actually get some cards. But it's just like, um, last time I watched you play Forza, which is called like Forza 2 or something like that. But remember when you could do engine swaps and shit like that? Yeah. That's what this, you can do in this Need for Speed. And it's cool because all the other, all the engines have all their unique engine sounds, and then you can tune the engine sounds. You can make the engine sound within a different range. And they all got so many different fucking engines. They got linear sixes, they got inline sixes, they got fucking V6s, they got V8s, they got v twelve, they got V10s, they got fucking, they got flat 12s, they got flat sixes, they got fuck, man, like all types of fucking engine types. They got like, they all have a 3.5 V6, and then they'll have a 3.6 V6. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a pretty fucking sick game. Well, it didn't last long. It only lasted like a week. And I still haven't gone online, which is cool. I've had so much fucking fun just playing it offline. Yeah. I feel like racing games are like a really good offline game. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It's not, it's, you gotta like racing, right? Like, that's just, racing's like, it's not just something like, oh, I'm gonna get good at racing because it's just a game to dominate. It's like, fucking racing's kinda gotta be the one. You gotta kinda wanna do it because, yeah, I do so much offline racing, man. Like, fuck. Even on my F1 game, I still do massive amounts of off offline racing. season it switches oh, okay. yeah <laughs> so this season your prestige is one yeah. but over your lifetime your prestige is three i think i have seven lifetime because i did like three prestiges in one fucking uh <coughs> one season one season yeah <laughs> and that was like um when me nick and john or yeah me nick and hunter could play all the time There was people on it last night. Oh yeah? Yep. Nobody's on it right now though. But yeah, I was just going through the ocean and I found these these two little mushroom biome areas and I was like, I'm claiming these. These are mine. <laughs> these are my biomes. It was close to the spawn too. I was like, how did nobody find these? These are beautiful. <laughs> I just build a bridge across it. Oh, yeah. Boom. Throw a little orange peel in that one. <laughs> oh, that's real time! Yeah. <laughs> On her wrist there in her game, like, oh fuck, that's yeah. actually the time! <laughs> it's for the, for the few people who have to like, have to check for when they actually have to go to work, it's like, <laughs> checking the game and then fucking, oh, okay, I still got time. Yeah. for an even fancier watch. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Speaking of watching games, I always find it. I think someone did find this before and just never fucking actually did anything with it. I didn't do that. That gun you're using, that's the only gun I ever got gold in my entire COD career. I 
got gold on like five guns. No, three guns. I was trying to do the diamond stuff, mm -hmm. and then I stopped playing. <laughs> That's the thing about COD, it just gets so boring, you're like, yeah. And then I don't touch it for a few years. Yeah. Usually the, when the point when I start caring about skins, and then uh, eventually I'm just like, uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through doing a job with you right now, you fucking piece of shit. Like, what the fuck are you doing telling me this stuff where you're telling me about how you're, if you're gonna bankrupt your company, start a new one? Like, I work for that current company that you're talking about bankrupting, yeah. you fucking mean it. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> man, I put a series of doubt in you today. Like, ugh. I don't know about this, man. Fuck. Somebody, that's you were not. You're looking at your phone. You're fucking staring off in the distance. You're too tired. You're too high. You're too drunk. You're too fucking something. Yeah. How do you rear-end somebody, man? That that is the stupidest fucking answer you could ever give that. And then first thing for Dallas, what are you doing lending your fucking truck to somebody? Like, what, are you, what the hell's wrong with your brain? If that guy needs to go get some material or something, you need to let him go. Take the fucking bus or Uber, man. Supposed to be self sustaining. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, oh, I got enough of my own tools and I got my own game and stuff. Like, why don't I just work for myself, right? Like, I'm happy that I don't have enough fucking tools. Yeah, man. I was at a son of my boss about how I was gonna make that whole suite downstairs. Yeah. And he was like, Yeah, take a bunch of pictures of it and stuff like that. And if it looks good, maybe I'll get you to help me with uh, renovating the house, uh, one of his houses, because he does like a bunch of rental stuff. That same guy there, right? Yeah. could do all this stuff right now all by yourself you can actually start a company all by yourself and you can you know hire the right guys blah 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 but it's the it's the experience that comes it's the confidence that comes from experience is that the only thing that you need now it's just got you just got to do it enough times to know that either a it will work out or b you know what you're doing so you're gonna make it work out kind of thing so like like right now i can go start a fucking a drywalling company or a fucking siding company or anything I want because even though I don't, don't know fuck all about that field I know enough to know that like but I'm capable right like I've been in trades long enough like yeah I can do that I could definitely do siding I could definitely do flooring I could do fucking drywall and all that stuff and then I would just hire a guy I just hire a pro some fucking some guy that you know needs a lift and needs tools I'm like okay I'll give you tools I'll give you a ride you get a lower wage and then I get a free education and that's it then you just move on like, now you're brand new whatever the fuck you want to be 
I picked this roof up on Monday. It's only 50 bundles. I should have had it done yesterday. I haven't even put a single shingle down yet. I just can't find the motivation, dude. I just don't want to do it, bro. I just... Yeah. I just don't want to fucking do it. Coal or something soon. That's how I feel about cooking right now because I'm fucking in the kitchen some days and like I'll be talking about it with my coworkers because I'll be like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's eventually it just comes to you, you know, I've been doing this for seven years. I started this when I was 14. Bill 3. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> How is this thing still around? <laughs> They're like, hey, why you, why is it different? <laughs> so maybe I'll start streaming. I'll start playing Tekken. Yeah. When I quit smoking weed eventually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking put that on. This is what it looks like after quitting weed, after smoking it for 30 years. Very fucking amazing. Can you believe that? I can't. I'm the <laughs> Wait, somebody 
they told me who wasn't old that they had been smoking weed for 30 years, I'd be like, okay, and let me guess, you got a dino, cut dinosaur too, right? <laughs> and I'd be like, oh shit. Eight years old. Fucking you went down there. I didn't even notice that. There's like one of those ocean things down there. I was like, what are those lights? I don't have torches or anything yet. <laughs> I don't even have a pickaxe. <laughs> Came to this island and I was like, shit, there's no trees. <laughs> when you make a tunnel down and fucking underneath the ocean, then pop up somewhere where they can move it. Oh, yeah. you need tools over there. <laughs> well, I, I can make a pickaxe here because these fucking mushrooms act as wood. I didn't figure that out until I started trying to cut them down. I was like, I wonder. I was like, oh shit, this works. I don't know which island. My house is going to be on this one, so I'm going to mine on this one. Oh, um... Fields, <laughs> mushroom biome, mycelium. Mycelium. Yeah. Pretty stone. Yeah, so I go to fucking Dallas with you and uh, go over the garage to. I was picking up a generator, but the generator is fucked. Yeah. So I look further in the garage and there's like. Tell you that right now, I am. I'm hard with those Frenchmen, man. They're greasy. Anyways, he hired this guy named E, and this fucking E guy went and fucking took, tore apart that whole compressor, so it was in pieces. Like, I could see push rods and shit, and like yeah. levers hanging out of it, and all the pieces on the ground. Took it apart, and they're like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. And then just stopped. And just put <laughs> all those pieces on the ground. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you, you trusting a fucking Frenchman for? First of all, I mean, fucking. Let me guess, he told you he'd been in mechanics for like, what, five, seven fucking years? Oh well, yeah! Well, like, how was he a mechanic and a roofer at the same time, Dallas? <laughs> like, come on, use your own fucking brain. You think, well, can you? I said, oh yeah, I said, I could definitely fix this. I said, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> I said, well, why not? I said, because it's not my mess. I said, it's not my problem. I said, I'm not coming over here and mopping up after some fucking French guy that you fucking went and hired. I'm like, I'm like, no, like, you gotta learn your lesson. I'm like, Either you hire a guy now to come put you together, or you go pick up YouTube and you do your big goddamn self. You can't pay me enough to go put this guy together. Because I was going to use that compressor, I needed it, and then it was in pieces. I just fucking died. I'm like, oh my goodness. And then the other compressor that I normally use, when forward to use the red one, that's in the shop too. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Go away. How am I supposed to mine stone if it's locked? Oh no! <laughs> it says it's locked. David, use your monitor. Can you just look at the Uh, I can't. You want to get the other part? Or is it the computer? Uh, I don't have enough ports on my computer. So you gotta buy a new port thingy? Kinda. Okay. You gotta buy different cords. Yeah, there's an extensive my computer all day. You gotta buy a port thingy? <laughs> <laughs> out of all the thingies out there, I think you need the port kind, yeah. Oh, this is a special switch. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that, skills, level of points thing. Hey, look at that, now stones are locked. 
Turns out I gotta level things up. Farming one to do that, huh? Hmm. Because it's the game without the wreck, though, right? Like, you just go in there. Well, yeah, there's an end, so you can go kill the dragon, but yeah. beyond that, like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. And, like, I noticed that, like, given, given, you know, given the ability and the free space to, to do whatever, whatever the hell anybody wants, people have a tendency to create. Yeah. Like, fucking linear and create vertical, and then I'm like, I'm so baked right now, it's like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're God because of that. <laughs> we are the universe. Oh my God. I'm going to stand in the other dimension. <laughs> I'll see you guys. I guess I got to actually kill things in this game. Hmm. My half a heart. I gotta kill things. This is gonna go so well. I don't even think I killed like a cow yet. Ooh, cool mushroom boat. Right. I gotta write down these coordinates. designer so this kind of looks shitty to me I don't know That is. I'm 
gonna add a command for the server so people can join whenever they want. It's not mine. <laughs> it's just a public server, I found. I could probably start my own server as well. I've done it before. This cost me a couple dollars a month. For real, I could do a sub server. viewers back and we can make a minecraft server a beautiful rainbow Nice. I'd probably do, um, I don't know, because I know a lot of people 
don't have the best of computers to play modded, but I would like a modded server. But I used to have a vanilla one I used to run, and I still have the backup for it. I used to, I, I even paid for some plugins as well. Single good. It's a bamboo, I'll take that. I don't feel safe being out in the open at night with no armor and three hearts. I'm gonna go back in my boat. I used to have a lot of plugins and there was lots of cool stuff on that server. And I optimized a lot of stuff and I was making custom armor sets and stuff like that and it was all in vanilla and it was cool. And then uh, I, stopped. I got, had to work so I stopped doing that for like a month and then eventually just stopped paying for the server. For real. There, that's the one for now. And then I can switch that when I make my own server to whatever my IP will be. this look at this doggo she's just chilling in the chair Yeah, I'm just going to slowly up the quality of the stream uh, whenever I can. Like, I'm going to get paid on Friday, and then that's when I'm going to get the game. That's when I'm going to get a couple extra things for the stream I got to pay for. <laughs> like, I'm going to get a, a tripod for my phone, and then that... I can we can use for the the art streams more 
and I'll pay for the subscription, or not the subscription, but the, the pro version of the app so that I can actually fucking get 1080p and not just 480p. Even though the quality was pretty good on the stream, I won't lie. 480p, not, not too shabby, but high quality. We go for quality. Yeah. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna look for something real quick. I should probably move into a safe slot. Oh, are these like firefly things? I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, somebody's house, maybe? Yeah, 
somebody's house. Cool. Ooh, a melon? I don't know if I can take this. Yeah, yeah. Oh my! No way, bro. No effing way, bro. I fell and died. Oh, this is so cool, bro. Twink Central, bro. No way. Yeah, the Nether Portal is really cool. It's a little laggy for some people, though. Okay, <laughs> I guess I gotta go... Am I going the right way? Yeah, this is the right direction. Or, actually... This way is the right way, but yeah. Can I have that as an option? I would have liked to know where I died, bro. I don't even know where I died. That's the worst part about it. Do I keep my level? I don't even keep my level. Can I kill these? Oh, that's cool. Somebody else's base.
Fall. Right in pillage time. No, you can you can claim things, so everything's protected. For real, the horror game night's gonna be fun as shit. table over there from last time I had to do this. Okay. go in this direction. There's no rainbow to guide me this time. I'm just gonna call it a loss because I feel like I would have found it by now. I don't know. Seeds, I got some wheat. I can I can start a farm. Uh oh.
mushroom saucers. I did. I did claim to see. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll expand, and it'll be phenomenal. I can't see. This is why I needed to do stuff. All right, we got ten pieces of dirt. This is what's gonna start our farm. No, I need farming to, to farm. Oh boy, this is gonna be a journey. make it so I can see a little bit. She's just chilling on the couch. Sleepy as can be. Huh? No. Do you work today? Do you work? Damn. Huh? Unfortunately. What to do about this? I didn't think this one through, boys. We're just gonna have to kill things.
How do you make a waystone? Bam. Give me a warp stone. Damn, dog. Damn. You did hear a kill. I got a kill. We got a kill. Gotta kill some mobs, man. We gotta, we gotta get something done about this. I can't even make a bed right now. fish I do I get a little bit I'll take it and I get fish for it right like yeah we win fuck dude ah I got two hearts I don't ah bro Minecraft Pro, I can punch a spider to death if I want to. That's right. Oh my god, dude. It takes so much work just to fucking level up. <laughs> this is a fucking whole ass progress we gotta go through. Not enough time to react. Fuck, dude. Uh, it's just somebody's claim. I wanted to steal their stuff. No, no! It hurts! It hurts! I just need some sheep or something, man. You tell me there's a plains biome with no sheep? The plains with no sheep? The ruby ore? Like, bro. The plains with no sheep? It's as bad as the Yankee without the brim. You just psyched me out, you see that? For real, the weeds be hurting, dude. Disabled sheep spawning or something like bro how the hell am I supposed to even make it out here like there's no pigs no cows no sheep what is this dry ass fucking place oh yeah but there's a squid Okay, we're gonna do this, but we gotta watch our fucking, uh, our, our water. Bro, not gonna lie, squid kinda sound terrifying in this game. Some moderate exp oh my god why do you gotta be so fast bro stop it okay we got one xp bro we can't even use it yet uh, i don't even know i don't even know how are we gonna do this how are we supposed to do this We 
we could try. I have an idea. Cause spawn should be around here. I actually don't know where spawn is, so. No, that's not what I wanted. Fuck. Bro. Uh, uh. If I can find spawn, we're we're in we're in luck. You know what? Turn down this music a little bit because it's starting to get obnoxious. Um, let me go back in the stream. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check the vod. I don't think I can. Fuck! This a problem, bro. I gotta find me spawn. And I'm fucking. My guy ain't moving so quick anymore. I feel so slow in this game now. Oh my god. How do people play Minecraft at regular walking speed? I feel so much slower than regular walking speed right now. This is fucked. I'm just gonna have to drown again, really. I don't have a choice. Oh, maybe. I think I remember this crafting table. We're almost there, boys. <laughs> With my almost no hunger. This is wild. This feels illegal. That's it right there. That's spawn. I found my way back. Oh, it's 
it's free food. Boys, it's free food. Please tell me they put a crafting table here somewhere. <coughs> Bruh. My slow walking ass needs a crafting table. I picked mine up. Okay, it's all better now, boys. So my idea was there's supposed to be an ender farm, right? So if you go to the ender farm, <coughs> easy levels, am I right, boys? That's it. That's all it was. That that was the way. That's it. We solved it. I'm tearing down the mob noises. Problem solved. This is why I wanted to go to spawn. This is why I made the swords. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. problem is that can happen easy thing is is we're right at spawn oh why did I feel so bad for this guy right now At least it didn't break his thing like I thought it would. I got too close to the Enderman. They fucked me up. No wands. They kill the Endermite. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Person. Somebody joined. Yeah, I think I got too close to the enderman and I died. Yeah. health bro I ain't li living out here with fucking three hearts
No XP storage or anything? Okay. I broke all the swords already. Well, ain't that something? Oh, I need alchemy five, huh? Damn. Smithing four. Now I can try to make it back home. So what should I do? Should I get like... Should I even level up here? Lux armor items. Leather armor at level 1. 2. Silver. Gold. Iron armor is until level 5. So I gotta level that up. I know, 30 levels that easy, man. Ain't nothing to it. Ain't nothing but a peanut. Oh, I even get a little bit of uh, protection just for having um, th that as well. I didn't even notice that. Oh, somebody died here. Damn. I always realize I need to find a tree right when <laughs> I get to this point. 
But I'm gonna have to get back to my base, and once I do, I'm gonna have to start getting ready for work. But that won't be for another like 20 minutes at least. That claimed area. This man has sheep. Should bring some shears here. Wait, can I kill the sheep in here? Because like, or or will it not let me? I don't want to kill his sheep. Yeah, you're not allowed to interact with this enemy in this chunk. Okay. Damn dog. What's up, boy? You're not allowed to use that thing over here. Oh my god, it takes off so much health. Never do that again, please. To me, myself, and I. I don't know why I put things in that ender chest. I kind of need that bread. I should have took the bread with me. I'm stupid. But I got farming now, so we can farm our own bread. Okay, bet there's going to be a crafting table somewhere. Actually, no, I probably would have took it with me because I was smart last time. Dang. Leave crafting table for when I have to come back, I guess. Inevitably. It's inevitable. Until I get to bed. I guess I got there a little quicker than I thought. That's fine. I gotta make some coffee anyways. At least we can use our stuff now. That's kind of a tall ass mushroom. Imagine if I fucking die there again. <laughs> that would have been fucking funny. I won't lie. It would have made me mad, but it would have been funny. Mushrooms growing in my house. Hey, the tree grow! It grew. Grow. It grow. Doesn't fell trees either. Damn. The tree grow, bro.
Oh my god, I could not use that stone axe and I didn't get any of that wood because of it. Oh my god. Not cool, bro. Go. The vanishing torch. Oh well. All right. Well, I think that's going to be all for the day. Thank you guys for coming by, and thank anybody for watching, if you enjoy the stream, uh, I'd appreciate it if you follow, and if you're already following, I'll see you guys in the next stream. Time to get ready for work.